Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Today I finally addressed the noise issue of my editing PC and we go from this to this. Stay tuned if you want to learn a little bit more about how this magic happened. This is my office. It's where I do most of my work, my editing, writing. This is where I watch YouTube videos, play games. This is my favorite place in the house, but it has a major problem that needs to be addressed. The noise comes from my PC fans that are about 15 inches from my ear. 60 decibels is not the end of the world, but the constant noise does bother me, especially when the PC is on load and it ramps up the fans to be a little bit louder. Also, it's not very good for the voiceovers I record sitting on this chair. I do want to capture the cleanest sound possible for the videos you are watching. When I put this PC together back in 2018, some parts were money savers. I didn't want to break the bank with it. The processor is an AMD R7 1800X. That pretty much was the top of the line when I put this computer together. Now the motherboard and case were the biggest money savers here. I think the case costed around $20 and the motherboard around $50. Now the motherboard I don't need to address now, but the case I really really do. And this cheapo case I'm using right now is going to the Pentium 3 Windows 98 PC project, so it's a win-win. I think there were two major flaws that made this build really noisy. The first is the position of this all-in-one water cooler. The first place I thought to put it was the top of the PC case. But there isn't enough room there. The radiator hits the memory modules and the CPU power cable connector. So I had to front mount it and I didn't want hot air from the case going in the direction of my face. So I set it in a way it draws air from the outside. The problem with that is the fans for it are right next to the metal grill and the restriction makes them work harder to cool the radiator. The side effect of that is that the video card doesn't get enough air at room temperature. So when I play games, I usually open up the case and that's not ideal for dust and noise issues. The second flaw is that I was lazy and I didn't remove the crappy thermal compound that came spread on the water cooler block to put a fresh batch. I used it the way it came, so that needs to be addressed as well. Now that we have put a bit of context into this video, let's swap those cases as fast as possible. The first thing I'll do is remove the biggest part in here, my trusty GTX 1060. And now I guess I have to undo that beautiful cable management I did in 2018. That is definitely going to need some cleaning. That funky thermal compound that came in the AIO block did something I have never seen before. Instead of turning into a hard paste, it liquefied. Tell me in the comments section if you have ever seen that happen before. This is the fan hub that came with the AIO water cooler. Extremely necessary for this motherboard that came with a measly two fan headers, when just for the water cooling I needed three. One for the pump and two for the fans, and that's not counting for any case fans. Now this is the most important part of your PC, do not ever forget to install the motherboard IO shield or you will be cursed forever. Now of course we want to clean everything as best as possible before we put the PC in that brand new case. I love these alcohol wipes, I use them for cleaning everything. Now that the radiator is all cleaned out, we have to clean the fans. Now, unfortunately, I don't know any shortcuts for cleaning the fans. You have to clean every single blade. That is a pain. So this is how that thermal compound that came with the CPU block from the water cooler turned out. Really liquid. That's weird. I have never seen thermal compound do that before. Hopefully spreading a fresh batch of thermal compound in there will make that more efficient. All right, all the parts are cleaned and ready to go in the new case. So now we start prepping the new case and almost instantly when I turn the case to the back, I found this little box from the factory. It's like a little gift box. I love it. And it's my favorite gift also. Screws and cable ties. Thank you so much. So the motherboard's in place and I'm already gonna open and use my little present. To hold the motherboard, I usually use the screws with a little flat edge, but to tell you the truth, 
not all factories follow this standard and sometimes it's they use the round head screws or even the the hex head screws for the motherboard and everything else i'm doing some test fitting and i already can tell that the radiator is going to be able to clear the memory modules and the power connector so i mounted the fans in the radiator in the way that the power wires come together in the middle so it's easier to route them and cable manage there is a convenient cutoff here where you set the radiator so you can route the fan cables. And I'm going to put this amount of thermal compound, I'm pretty sure is enough. Since the beginning of this case swap, I had no issues at all. Everything went completely smooth and I was really enjoying the design of the case until, well, after I set the power connector for the motherboard and the CPU and I connected the USB headers and some other the front audio header and I was test fitting the SSD because this case came with um, these cool caddies that you fit the SSD in and they lock on the, the holes on, on top of where the power supply goes there on that metal sheet problem is it doesn't fit the ssd power um, connector hits the motherboard headers so it's really just a, a project flaw there's no way this will fit and probably won't fit in any motherboard because most motherboards have their headers on the bottom part so the plan was to put both SSDs right there in the caddies that came for them um, and where they're supposed to go in the case, but not going to happen. They don't lock in. Very strange. So I'm going to put one of them on the part that the motherboard doesn't occupy on the case and the other one I'm going to have to put on the back. Now it's just a case of, get it, the case? Haha. <laughs> of putting my one and only front intake fan in. I might put another one fan in here in the future to equalize pressure and then put the video card in place. I have already routed the power cable for it and we are basically done. Now it's just turning it on and seeing if I did any good to fix the noise issue I had. The PC looks very nice. I love the new case. I love the glass panel. It does help blocking some of the noise, but did I fix the issue I had? If I'm being honest and testing in the same conditions, no, I haven't. But I have one more thing to try. You see, this motherboard only has two fan headers. So the way the fans are connected is I have one case fan connected to the system fan header and I have a fan hub connected to the CPU header with one case fan. So two fans for the radiator, the pump and one case fan all connected to the same uh, motherboard header through a hub. I think the water cooler pump needs its own connection because it can't power it down like the fans do. If it does, like it's happening right now, the fluid stops flowing through the radiator and the CPU heats up immediately. So what I'll try to do is isolate the water pump in one fan header and connect all of the other fans in another fan header. This way, I can keep the pump moving fluid at a minimum of 60 to 70% or whatever keeps the temperature at a reasonable value and I should still be able to power down the fans to 20 or 30 percent and I think that might help let's see all right so I already done the two things I set out to do I put the SSD that was on the bottom of the case on the back so there's more room for airflow for the video card and I also changed the way the fans were plugged the pump slash uh, water cooler block is plugged on this one system case fan header and all of the other fans are plugged in the fan hub that's on the back of the case so as usual on the battlefield i am not very good at killing other players especially trying to use a rocket launcher but i did manage to get the noise level quite a bit down by getting the pump and connecting it by itself on another header so i can keep the pump going at a level superior to the fans 
So here are the fan curves I use. The pump is connected to the system fan curve varying from 80 to 100%. In conclusion, there are two problems with this case. The first one is that they have included two of these SSD cases that have this cool um, quick release mechanism, but unfortunately you can't use them because once you mount the SSDs on it, the SSD cables hit the bottom headers of the motherboard. So it's a bit useless. Another tiny issue is that they don't include screws you can use to attach the top fans and a radiator that will allow the magnetic filter to be leveled. But all in all, this Cougar Gemini case looks very nice. It's got plenty of room for a top 240mm radiator and a front one if you want, or fans, and I'm glad I got it. So that was it, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, leave your comment about life, the universe, everything what you see here on this channel, and I'll see you next time.